people with a sneezing fetish have a problem during the pandemic, and the police arrest a man who claimed he was making healthy meth, and a pro runner aims to smash the world's fastest mile while wearing blue jeans. These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian in a closet during a pandemic with fires going on outside. Hey, Mainstream News! Listen to Weird AF News with Jonesy. People with a sneezing fetish have divided feelings about the pandemic. I didn't know there was a sneezing fetish, did you? I'm learning so much about human sexuality by hosting a Weird News podcast. Remember the flip-flop fetish? (laughs) of 2020 that'll be it'll be forever known as the flip-flop fetish of 2020 the article says sneeze fetish oh yeah it's a real thing uh we don't really need reasons to imagine why people are into sneezing uh in fact sneezing and orgasming are both reflexes that follow a similar physiological pattern dr ruth says an orgasm is just a reflex like a sneeze did you enjoy my rock my dr ruth impression i hope so i have heard People say sneezing is like having an orgasm. I disagree completely. It's nothing like having an orgasm. An orgasm is so much better (laughs) than a sneeze. Not to say that sneezes are not enjoyable. Some are. I mean, it depends on the discharge. You know, sometimes I make a mess and I'm just, I feel, (laughs) well, then sometimes after an orgasm, I also make a mess. (laughs) Sometimes. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to stop this whole analogy right here, right now. Well, naturally, people that are into uh, the sneeze fetish are very concerned about the pandemic, as they should be. You probably shouldn't be getting together and sneezing with strangers, I'd say, right at this moment. You know, make sure you (laughs) make sure they have paperwork. (laughs) You want to make sure they're clear. Um, One person who's into the sneeze fetish says, this is why I have always preferred allergy sneezes over sneezes caused by illnesses. No contagion to worry about which has always been an aspect of the fetish which sits uncomfortably with me. Uh, The whole fetish should sit uncomfortably with you, sir. This is weird. (laughs) I mean, I'd imagine this person really looks forward to allergy season, like right about now or springtime. It's like, yeah, you can really go buck wild with the sneezing. And uh, it seems that they've missed a piece of important information, though. Sneezing is not a COVID-19 symptom, apparently. You might have a fever, fatigue, and a cough. However, sneezing is not directly linked to the virus, apparently. But it is uh, definitely a good idea to lay off these fetish activities while a pandemic is in the making. One very concerned individual, Mr. Sneezy, he calls himself, (laughs) I assume who has a sneezing fetish, writes, I'm having a lady around uh, who I haven't played with for 18 months. She's going to sniff chinkini and sneeze on me i expect no ill effects <laughs> well easy now mr sneezy don't be so confident by the way what is ch- chinkini chinkini hold on i need to find out an herbal snuff that makes you sneeze apparently is this what sneezing fetishists are into yeah why don't you come over and sniff that chinkini i got some <laughs> i got some cayenne baby <laughs> some this is like one of the strangest fetish fetishes I've ever heard of. <laughs> the article says Mr. Sneezy needs to know that sneezing because of sun allergy or chinkini on somebody will most definitely spread the virus regardless. It is crucial to know. And uh, in the end, this produces a dilemma that many many of us didn't know about before. As one user eloquently puts it, in the fight between the fetish and being infected, what do you choose? Uh, what do you choose? Well, uh, you wait is what you do. I mean, I don't understand why people can't just wait to have their fetish, uh, lifestyle turned back on. We're all waiting for various aspects of our life to be turned back on. Just wait, man. (laughs) Especially the extra shit that you, you know, this is extra stuff. Your little sneeze fetish, your bowling league, you know, I, I mean, your paintball, activities with your friends i'm doing without softball okay now and i know that's not a fetish but these are extra things you don't need to live you don't need these things to survive therefore just wait you silly freaks my opinion people are just are waiting to to have sex even people are not having sex they're waiting and, and sex is kind of vital for uh you know for people right 
your little flip flop fetish and your little chikini, chinkini, cayenne pepper, whatever the hell you're into, Kama Sutra, that can wait. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm out of my mind. You call the show. You tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right. But what do you think? I don't know. Tell me about your fetish. I want to. No, please, no pictures, please. 646 450 2012. My darling, I, I can't wait to sneeze on your face, baby. Girl, I don't know, I don't know why. I can't wait to sneeze on your face, baby. The police arrest a man who claimed he was making healthy meth. You know, the healthy meth, the kind with chia seeds in it. <laughs> a Colorado man is facing drug charges. Police say that he told them he was attempting to create a healthy meth substance with acai berries in <laughs> Acai berries, unbelievable, inside a meth lab in his garage. You know, where where all healthy inventions have the their germination in a garage. Although a search of the garage did not turn up any methamphetamine. Oh, that's bizarre. What about the berries? What's this weirdo's name? Craig Williams Rogers, age forty nine, was arrested on suspicion of controlled substance possession, possession of drug paraphernalia, and unlawful distribution, manufacturing, and dispensing of a controlled substance. Uh, the police officers say they received a tip, including pictures of the meth lab. Rogers was seen leaving the home in a pickup truck, and then he was stopped. He acknowledged that he had meth inside a pipe in the center console of his truck. Yes, that's, that's meth down there, but it's healthy meth. Officers, would you like to take a hit? It has strawberries in it. Strawberries. I've also added a little psyllium husk in the meth. That helps you poop. If you don't know, give it a try. <laughs> You can use my bathroom, officers. This will make you regular. He admitted he was making meth at home. And he said it was a healthy meth substance because there were acai berries inside it. <laughs> Booking documents do not indicate if Rogers has an attorney who can speak on his behalf. Yes, who would speak on this maniac's behalf? Oh, someone will, someone will. Your Honor, my client really cares about the community. He's He's sick and tired of this regular meth. He wants the meth to be much more healthy, you know? Meth normally takes about 10 years off your life. My client's trying to add 10 years to your life by, you know, adding some protein powder to his meth. If you notice, <laughs> have you smelled his meth, Your Honor? Jury, please, exhibit one. Smell the meth. Doesn't it smell like acai? <laughs> Sprinkle it on your yogurt in the morning. It's good for you. <laughs> Investigators did find a berry-like substance in his lab. No shit. Adding that there is no possible way to make healthy methamphetamine, though, the deputy said. <laughs> There's no possible way to make healthy methamphetamine. But what? What? What do you mean? What if you put it in a shake, huh? What about one of those meth smoothies I've been hearing about? No amount of meth is safe, whether it has a berry in it or not, the deputy said. It's a highly addictive, life-destroying drug, by the way. That's what the deputy said. <laughs> But deputy, deputy, haven't you seen people on meth? They, they, they lose weight. They really do. <laughs> if you are obese, you know, what you can, you can get it. Your whole, your whole, your entire health regimen can begin with a week on meth. That'll, you'll drop fifty pounds, and then you're on your way, right? <laughs> this is terrible. I don't. Weird AF News does not condone methamphetamines for losing weight or for any other reason. FYI, FYI. If you want to improve your life, you drop a tab of acid and then meditate. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A professional runner is about to smash the world's fastest mile wearing blue jeans. Way to keep your dreams going, buddy. Who's this guy? Johnny Gregoric. His Olympic dreams were postponed because of the pandemic, but he just set his sights on a more restricting challenge, running the world's fastest mile in jeans, and he's doing it to raise mental awareness. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's a photo of, of Johnny running in his jeans. Oh, look at you, Johnny Jeans runner. You little Johnny Jeans jogger, you. 
<laughs> you got to Google this right now and see this guy. He's got, <laughs> he's wearing like a, like a tiny little tank top as a runner would wear on top and then blue jeans on the bottom. <laughs> he's very serious too. He doesn't screw around. He's Johnny Jeans jogger, right? It's not much harder, he says, ah, to run in jeans. Really? It's not much harder? Well, you know, his jeans are a little, they're kind of loose and baggy, so they look like, um, if you're going to wear any jeans to run, you know, these kind of, this kind of like bell-bottom-ish pair that he has on, I think that's appropriate. I was hoping it would be like some tight, you know, hipster jeans. That would be hilarious. Uh, but no, no, th that's harder to run, to run in. Johnny, you should up your game and run in those tight-ass hipster jeans, man. Like, really show us that you're struggling. Come on. See if you can do a mile in those nut huggers, buddy. <laughs> That's, you want to impress me? Throw on some nut huggers and go around the track, huh, Johnny Blue Jeans? Well, Johnny Blue Jeans is a uh, elite middle distance runner. I have no idea what middle distance is. Um, here's a quote from him. It's not going to be as much of an obstruction as I first thought. <laughs> Good for you, Johnny. He's looking to beat the Blue Jean mile. It, the record is held by Dylan Maggard. It's... Uh, Four minutes, 11 seconds, is that it? In New York, uh, Gregoric currently holds the second fastest indoor mile run by an American at 349. Wow, 349. Hey, this guy's got a record at least, you know. I'll bet you Johnny Blue Jeans breaks the uh, the Blue Jean mile. I'll bet he does. He looks very serious. If you see the photo, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to feel like, uh, like this guy's got it. He's definitely got it. He's very determined. He's got some loose, appropriate jeans for running, I'd say. Johnny's got a plan and everything. He says, I've been wearing Levi's Model 501. Not too tight, not too loose. <laughs> it's your basic fit. It provides, you know, not too much bagginess or weight. It's also a little bit more form-fitting, so I'm able to not feel like I'm being impeded in my stride. <laughs> I want to see you impeded in your stride, dude. Come on, man. Earn it, man. Earn it. <laughs> in fact, I want to see you run in a ball gown... <laughs> That's what I want to see. A big flowing gown. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how you really impress me, Johnny Blue Jeans. Or what about if you just throw on like a plush Barney outfit, you know, with the with the head and the tail and the whole bodysuit. I want to see you run a mile in that bad boy, you know, raise money that way. I give I give you more money if you're running in a Barney suit, buddy. <laughs> the jeans, come on. Johnny Blue Jeans jogger said, you know, my team and I did some research and we, uh, oh, could I be on your jean team, buddy? We did some research and we looked into a few different styles. We wanted to do just that classic Levi's, you know, with 100% cotton and all that, you know, so it's, it even looks good. <laughs> you do, you do look good. And you, and your Levi's, buddy, your Levi's and your little running sneakers at the bottom. Of course, you know, I could have cheated on this because there's all kinds of blue jeans that have a bit of spandex in them. I don't know if you know that. And I probably could have got away with that, but I did not. I'm a purist. I wanted to do this in 100% denim, you know? If you break the record with some sort of advantage, you just... How could I sleep at night? <laughs> this guy takes it so seriously. I love it. Yep, you know? And if I break that record, I'll be able to know that I did it fair and square in my Levi's. <laughs> why Why isn't he doing a Levi's commercial is what I want to know. This guy should... Levi's should give him a lot of money to give to the mental people. For this, absolutely. Why not? Mental illness is a thing, and it's getting worse every day in my country, it seems to me, <laughs> the mental illness. So we need some blue jean joggers like Johnny Blue Jeans here to raise money. Help us all. Levi's, you need to donate as well. Get on board with this. Anybody work at Levi's that listens to my show? Probably not. Why am I asking? I'm so stupid. And by the way, you should know that I'm recording this podcast in a G-string. Okay, I'm going to break the podcast in a G-string record. I'm already, I'm already about 20 minutes in. <laughs> If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast. And also, make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify and make your life easier. Yay! Well, hello, my fellow weirdos, and thank you for listening to another episode of Weird AF News. I hope you're safe, and uh, I hope all is well 
right now, uh, wherever you may be. I want to thank everyone who reached out to me to see if I was okay. Uh, like my friend Sveta, <laughs> who reached out. Also Chelsea on Instagram wrote me a nice little note saying, uh, I've been listening to you for a very long time and you always entertain Jonesy. I was born in L.A. I live in Washington. I've been telling all my friends about you everywhere I go. Keep up the great work, brah. Well, thank you. I will keep up the great work, brah. <clears throat> the, the podcast will continue for sure, for sure. Uh, I had a nice uh, new patron I wanted to talk about, and uh, that is Shauna, who joined the patron um, I saw this morning, and it really, it really made my day, to be honest with you. And she, um, she wrote me a nice message. She said, um, "Dry humping someone in a onesie." <laughs> I guess that's something I said. She said, "Hey, seriously though, your opening to your podcast yesterday, Jonesy, made me well up. You are so worried about everyone else venting. If you want to vent." I'm a good listener. Take care, Jonesy. Thank you for doing what you do. By the way, your British accent reminds me of Tiny Tim. Please, sir, can I have some more? more? Can I have some more, sir? Uh, <laughs> she said, you should definitely be the narrator of Pride and Prejudice on Audible. <laughs> that would be amazing if I was. I would totally love to be the narrator of Pride and Prejudice. Or any Dickens novel, to be, to be honest. And then she wrote, just join the Patreon. I'm so glad to be able to be in a position to pay it forward. And I'm so grateful, Shauna, that you joined the Patreon and that you wrote that. It was uh, such a lovely thing to wake up to this morning. I've been waking up to uh, terrible news. So this was nice. It's nice to wake up to a new patron. If you guys want to join the Patreon, it's pretty easy. Patreon.com slash weirdafnews. You can join that way. Or you can send me uh, something on PayPal if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. It's uh, funnyjones at gmail.com. Um, reach out to me on the Instagram, as many people have, to see if I'm okay. It's at funnyjones. And I, I, most of the time, I answer. Uh, on on uh, Facebook, Comedian Jonesy. On Twitter, at funnyjones. The email, funnyjones at gmail.com. The phone number, 646-450-2012. The phone lines are always open for you. So please call the show. If any of the stories um, resonated with you or you just want to uh, send me a message, that you can do that as well. Uh, or if you want to vent because you're feeling angst over, um, over things in life, feel free. Call and, uh, call and let me know what's up in your life. I am uh, I'm not only the host of the podcast, but uh, consider me a friend. I'm here for you. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it like that. So I love my... Uh, my group of weirdos. I really appreciate you guys uh, listening to the show. My numbers have been uh, going up a bit during the pandemic. I noticed, and um, that's you know that's it's encouraging to know that I'm helping people laugh a little bit. I think, um, and uh, offering a healthy alternative to uh, depressing, devastating mainstream news and a pandemic which is going on. So, still. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to do that and I will continue to, to do that even though I'm going to work tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, but don't worry, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. 